This will tell you the whole story. Joe Ferrari has seen a lot in his 92 years. You can see a better picture of it, how it really looked. His life started in a farmhouse north of Bryan back in 1919. And that's a picture of, of it right now. His pinnacle, building a high rise, he thought would change the face of Bryan College Station. I thought I was doing something for the city and the college by going up for the high rise indicates that this was now not a town but getting it ready to be a city. Mm -hmm. That's the image that I was trying to create. To see the whole picture, you have to start in the Big Apple. In the tunnels of New York City, Joe got his first job. After his family moved there during the Great Depression, Joe worked for the subway. He was a famous trumpet man from our Chicago way. With the start of World War II, his life took another turn, and he joined the Navy. At the end of the war, and after more than a decade away from Brian, Joe decided to move back and get involved in his uncle's family business. We know it as Catalina Hatters, but back in the late 40s, Clayton Furniture occupied the space, and it was Joe's first business. To bring in the 50s, Joe started something new and opened two drive-ins, the Triangle Drive-In and Sugar and Spice. Both businesses met a lot of success, and his reputation on the table got the attention of one Earl Rudder. Mr. Rudder came to visit me and uh, told me I was getting ready to go to the hotel. Uh, built a hotel, and I told him I didn't know anything about a hotel. He says, well, you know the food business? It ain't gonna take you long to land a hotel. So Joe built it, and in 1960, the Ramada Inn at the corner of University Drive and Texas Avenue opened. We uh, built exactly what Mr. Rudder wanted. It was an Olympic swimming pool, a faculty club, and at least 150 rooms. And we had to have a banquet room that holds 1,000 people. It was the best of times for the Grand Hotel, and it served as a focal point for the community and Texas A&M. We were at 90% occupancy, doing real good business. And if you got to expand at that time, matter of fact, Ramada Inn was insisting that we do something. So in 1980, construction of a new high rise began. How did I get here? In a matter of a year, the building had grown to 17 stories and included 20 apartments purchased by prominent Aggie oilmen. As the high-rise topped out, the bottom of the oil business dropped out. Every one of them went bankrupt us up. Clayton Williams, uh, uh, and he, uh, uh, he kept his deal, but that wasn't enough. Despite interest rates going through the roof and several empty apartments, Joe pushed on and opened his hotel. It was the crown jewel of BCS, but thanks to the tough economy, Joe couldn't keep his head above water. He fought bankruptcy the best he could, but in the end, the bank took his pride and joy. They took everything from me except my house, my wife, my son, who was living with us, a dog and a cat, and one, one, one car. That was it. I lost $32 million. It was the end of the line for Joe and his Ramada Inn. It has switched hands a number of times, but its most recent reincarnation as the Plaza Hotel just seemed to keep the curse of the 80s oil bust with it. And the doors were shut for good in 2010. So when was the last time you walked through these doors? Uh, about uh, 20 years ago. With the plaza scheduled for demolition next month, we took the man who built it back in. This is something. It make tears come out of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer the grand hotel he envisioned and built, but memories of the good days came flooding back to Joe. Like when the dining room was accidentally decorated with a little bit too much orange. I didn't pay attention to it, and when we opened up, there was almost a riot. <laughs> we had to close it down for a couple of days and bring in an upholstery and change all the colors. 
<laughs> maroon and white. I'll never forget that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> One of Joe's most vivid memories at the hotel happened in 1963. There was a TV set right out here, a little small, small one. And as I walked through here and it was on, it was when uh, Kennedy was shot in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And I had just went on and I looked at it and I said, no, can't be. Then there's Joe's pride and joy, the hotel's original banquet room. A lot of happiness and a lot of problems happen into this big room. The hotel is in the process of being cleared out for demolition, but even then, years of vandalism are still apparent. So if you had to do it all over again, would you build the high-rise? No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. But Joe will have mixed emotions when the building comes down. It's going to be tears, and then it's going to be joyous because it'll be a beautiful, beautiful setup. According to their pictures and everything else, it will make this building, this corner, looking very, very pretty. When Joe and I first met, one of my questions had to do with the demolition of the building and if he wanted any part of it. His answer seemed to sum up his 30-year relationship with the corner of Texas and University. It would make it be an honor to do it because I know it stood up that long. It was a perfect building and I would love to destroy it. It would give me a lot of satisfaction. I know it sounds bad, but it's a fact. I would go away very happy. Well, any final goodbyes to the plaza? Yeah, you go by. <laughs> In College Station, Shane McAuliffe, News 3.